أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I beseech his mercies and blessings on his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his household, his companions and those who followed him till the day of reckoning. Ameen. Yesterday we discussed about the Makanu Nuzuli Surat Al-Fatiha, the place in which Surat Al-Fatiha was revealed. And who can remind us where we said it was revealed? Mecca. Despite all other opinions, but the one that is weighty, Wallahu alam, is that it was revealed in Mecca. Inshallah, this morning we'll be looking into Sababu Nuzuli Surat Al Fatiha as promised yesterday. Though, regarding the Sababu Nuzul, is the thing that is not that common, like unlike other surah that we have clear sabab nuzul But we saw a particular hadith that the chain of this hadith, when you know critically scrutinized, it was discovered that the chain is correct, and the rijal in the hadith, they are also caught, they are trustworthy people. So that is why we want to use this as an evidence to establish the fact that Surah Al-Fatiha also has a Sabab Al-Nuzul. Though it is not something that is pronounced like other Surah that the Sabab Al-Nuzul is well known. But this Hadith, when scholars of Hadith, Al-Muhaddithun, when they checked it, they saw that the Rijal, the men in the chain of the Hadith, they were all trustworthy. And that is why we are bringing this in. In the discussion, Sababu Nuzuli Suratil Fatiha. The reason, uh, the, uh, yes, the reason for the revelation of Suratul Fatiha. To begin with, Haddasana Abu Usman, the father of Usman, spoke to us, who was Sa'id ibn, <coughs> ibn Muhammad Al Zahid, Akhbarana Jaddi. He said his own grandfather informed them. قال أن يسأل أخبرنا أبو عم الجيري إبراهيم ابن الحارث that that person I just mentioned also informed them وعلي ابن سهل ابن المغيرة and this person that I mentioned now also did the same قال both of them they said حدثنا يحيى يحيى ابن أبي بكير they said Yahya, Yahya ibn Abu Abi Bukair spoke to them. Adasana Israel, they said Israel also spoke to us. An Abi Ishaq. You can see I'm mentioning names. Those are the Rijal, the men of the Hadith. From Abu Ishaq, An Abi Maisar. Abu Ishaq also reported it from who? Abu Maisar. For Kullu Rijalin. You can use kullu with jamu, and you can use it with uh, mufrat. It's also correct. Kullu rijalin, all the men that we mentioned here, when they were scrutinized, checked into their ways, their behaviors, you know, that's what scholars of Hadith do. They saw that kullu hum fiqat, they are all trustworthy. And the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and they said that the Prophet sallallahu كان إذا برز سمع مناديا ينادي. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to hear the voice of a caller that used to call him whenever he was, you know, in a place to لتعبد to worship. Inshallah, we still discuss some of the things that will be reading out in this hadith. The Prophet ﷺ used to hear a sound, a voice of a caller that used to call him. Ya Muhammad, the caller will say, O oh Muhammad, فَإِذَا سَمِعَ Whenever the Prophet ﷺ had the voice, 
The voice used to scare the prophet. The, the voice used to frighten the prophet. And whenever he had a voice, he would run and, you know, leave that spot. You, you see how powerful, how severe the voice could be. He used to scare the Prophet ﷺ and he would run away. There is a man called Waraka ibn Nawfal. The discussion of Waraka ibn Nawfal will be, will be discussed tomorrow, inshallah. Man huwa Waraka ibn Nawfal. Al huwa sahabi or ghayr sahabi. Was he a companion of the Prophet ﷺ or not? لماذا كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ينطلق هاربا؟ Why did the Prophet ﷺ used to run away whenever he had a voice? We will discuss those two things tomorrow, inshallah. Because we don't want to make the discussion to be lengthy. Now to conclude the hadith. The Prophet ﷺ would run away upon hearing the voice of this scholar. Waraka ibn Nawfal then said, إِذَا سَمِعْتَ nida." I don't want to go into the story now. Because before the message got to Waraka, he would, he would run home to meet who? Who was the wife of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then? Khadija. Been to Khawailid. The fright would run to meet the wife. You know? All the statement of the hadith. Dathiruni. Dathiruni. Zammiluni. Zammiluni. Allahu Akbar Kabir. I said it about a couple of days ago. If we know how the Quran got to the prophets, wallahi, we will not joke with the Quran that we are joking with today. That we, if we know how it's got to the prophet, with a lot of, you know, the prophet suffered. Sometimes upon revelation, the prophet will be sweating. Serious one. Sometimes upon re- revelation, the prophet would, would faint. Everything happening around him, he wouldn't know again. You will see that the forehead, you know, cushion sweat. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had what Nawfal, uh, Waraka ibn Nawfal told him. He told him that whenever he hear, he hears the sound of the person calling, fast boot. You know, what did he used to do whenever he had the sound? What did the Prophet used to do whenever he had the sound before? He would run away. Then, Waraka ibn Nawfal told him that whenever he ha- hears the sound, he should stay put. He shouldn't run again. He should stay where he is. Hatta tasma ma yakulu lak until he hears what the person who calls wants to say. Wants, wants to say. Call. Falamma baraza sami an nida. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also got to the point where he used to, you know, reflect and worship. He had another, another voice. Ya Muhammad, the way he used to hear it the first time. Oh Muhammad, Fakal. And the Prophet ﷺ obeyed who? And he, he stayed put. He didn't, he, didn't, he didn't run this time around. And he said, Labbaik. I'm, I'm, I'm listening to you. Labbaik. I'm responding to you. When the Prophet Sallallahu said, Labbaik, call, then the caller said, Kul, say, O oh, you Prophet, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashhadu anna muhammadan rasulullah. Say that I testify that there is no deity worthy of worshipping truth except Allah, and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Thumma call, then the, the caller then told him, Cool. Say again, Alhamdulillahi Rabbi. That's where I'm going. Say again, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Maliki Yawm al-Din. Hatta Faragh min Fatihat al-Kitab. He told him to say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Till he finishes the, the, the recitation. And this statement we just quoted. Hatha qawlu alish ibn Abi Talib. This is what the Sahabi, uh, the Sahabi, the Khalifa Rab Al Khalifa Rab. This is what he said regarding this Surah Al Fatiha, and this statement, this wordings, as we've said it, can be seen in the book that we we encourage us to get when we were mentioning the books of Tafsir. 
اسباب النزول لابي الحسن علي بن احمد بن محمد بن علي الواحدي النيسابوري الشافعي so this is a book that scholars also recommend for tafsir so but it's not just common like ibn kathir so we pray allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the guidance therein so i i will stop here inshallah subhanakallahumma bihamdika shallallahu la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaika assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh